Securing a fourth straight victory in San Antonio, the Dubs are now two games ahead of Houston for the final play-in seed, with the Rockets losing at home to the Dallas Mavericks, who we talked about a few videos back. Steph's 33-8 masterclass, Dre's near record-setting 21.11 assists and 6 steals, plus Paws keeping them in it early while combining with CP and Moody for 31 off the bench, were enough to drive another make-or-break W, molding Golden State into where they need to be for a potential 2 2 or die play in tournament battles. After the film from the Alamo, we'll look ahead to April and outline the mental approach that'll be a critical necessity if there's any chance of a Bay Area survival into May and June, as unlikely as that sounds as we speak. As many doubters as there are, it ain't over until the fat lady sings, and there have been several silver linings no matter what happens. But nonetheless, this Golden State Warriors up and down roller coaster of a season has been out of control, so stick around for a full breakdown that you cannot miss. Right quick, just 12.7% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy my content. It was rookies going to work for both sides to kick things off in San Antonio. On this handoff with Jackson Davis pitching to Curry, Jackson Davis's pick factors Trey Jones out of the equation. This makes it a half-court two-on-one, where Curry baits attack with elusive eye contact and dribbling on the move to collapse Wemby away from TJD, opening a seam for Steph to float it over Victor to trace for the hoop. Wembenyama would respond a few possessions later by off-ball jabbing to fake an on-ball screen before slipping back door on Jackson Davis for a monstrous lob finish. An 11-0 first quarter San Antonio run featured the Dubs playing down to their competition. For the first half as a whole, the Dubs had 10 turnovers, plus were unserious about executing offensively or staying in position on the glass slash on the defensive end. In the midst of a slow start that cannot afford to repeat itself given everything else that's made this season a roller coaster as we'll get to later on, keeping the dubs in it was the product of Illinois and Santa Clara, Brandon Pajemski. This staggered screen for CP with Pajemski popping sees the Spurs leave him open for a wide open triple where he knocks in his fifth straight point, but the rookie was far from finished his early work. Down 13 in the late first and with Peyton missing this jumper, watch Pajemski out hustle both Julian Champagny and Blake Wesley to tip out an O board to himself, which while gathering it it, he mid-air kicks to Looney, then Kavon's dish to Paul manufactures a massive three to keep the dubs in it. Momentuming to his offhand, watch the IQ from Pods to respond to a clog lane by not simply backtracking to the arc, handing off to Clay and spacing out, but also screening for Clay, which nets brands in both an actual assist and screen assist when Thompson hits. This rookie spread ball screen I think defines the pristinely aware hustler that Pajemski is as he stays with his shot for another O board, but this time fundamentally banks it off the square. To score or assist on 19 of 21 Warrior points, ranging from the 320 mark of the first quarter to the 920 mark of the second, a stretch where the dubs desperately needed buckets to stem the tide, Brandon would bullet to Moody several times. First with his offhand, he locates Moody at the top of the arc, where Moses sheds Austin with a pump fake before hitting, and then after a spread with Trace, he locates Moody on the far right wing where Devontae Graham sags off Moses. The bench backcourt as a whole was on point, as the creating of not just Pods but Chris Paul was crucial. The overlooked longevity of CP3s displayed after 5 plus dribbles, including one of his patented fake bounce passes, all of which take him through the paint, to get enough legs behind this mid-range fade. But the scoring of Wemby was still influential all throughout for San Antonio, as the 7-4 Wizard utilizes a screen off the bounce before pulling up in traffic for a triple like a player a foot shorter than him. This would force a Kerr timeout, where he'd draw up an organized action featuring a high ball screen that leads into a kick and relocate Steph executes. That said, the feisty Spurs behind Victor's 32 and a more dangerous than usual look in Seti Osman, who had a team's second most 18, gave the Spurs an 8 point lead entering the locker room. However, responding to Kerr's message, the Dubs opened the third frame on a 14 0 run behind the impact of Draymond Green, who, as we'll get to, had a historic night. A consecutive bucket in transition to open the period for the man sees Green intelligently scope out the open driving angle before getting to his left while fending off Wemby. Draymond's career high by far 38.8% three-point stroke this season is contributed to with this heavily contested corner triple. 
Dre would proceed to spot Curry lurking off a pin down for a triple, then out of a split action, take in this bit of chemistry between the dub's front court. as after Trey sets the cross for Steph, Davis fills out the lane to receive it from Dre, and TJD underhands it right back to him for the finish. The chef would then take command, following a Draymond pin down at the elbow, as Stefan would shuffle off it to get the swing from Thompson before saucing up Osman with a single tween and flowing right into a slight step back. High ball screen from Peyton features Moses crossing the Red Sea by catching the Spurs ball watching with a fundamental backdoor cut before Steph spots him. The second unit would continue to match the success it had in the first, as before it was Pajemski driving and dishing for a couple Moody spot up triples, it's this time vice versa, Moody returning the favor by driving and dishing to Pajemski for the spot up triple. But 2023's number one pick, Victor Wembenyama, displayed how he's been living up to the hype in his rookie campaign, allowing the Spurs to stick around. Like he did in the opening half, Victor would drain a contested pull up triple. The Rook would then generate a fifth consecutive fourth quarter point with this beastly up fake drive into a jab step, double back down, drop step, and posterization. I mentioned Victor wanting revenge in the intro of my last video, and while the Spurs may have taken the L, by getting TJD back with this go-go gadget baptizing, and with his performance all throughout, Wemby showed Warrior fans what he's all about. But it's not like Trace Jackson Davis shied away after getting dunked on, as TJD would set this empty side flare for Curry, and ultimately get loose in the dunkers, where he received a low-bouncing entry from Steph and dunked it. In a comfortably situated single-digit game, the closer was there to do what he does best, as this kick and relocate leads into a staggered screen and Steph steps back to shed Sandro Mamu Kelishvili before getting a ridiculously high amount of arc on this insane deep range bomb. Curry would reverse seal on Trey Jones to receive this green entry for a bucket. This Chicago action where Moody ghosts the pin down gets Curry a clean trace DHO before Steph finesses a floater under pressure from the foul line. Then receiving a green DHO, Curry instantly catches and shoots despite Trey closing out hard. Another Kerr masterpiece of a playset features Steph flying around a green off-ball screen and receiving a slip screen on the ball from Trace in the short corner. Curry then makes a great read to spot green, and like he did to open the half, Draymond goes through Wemby to his left for a tough finish. However, a weird technical foul on Gary Payton II for throwing the ball, Osman hitting a triple, and then the Spurs turning defense into offense off a dub's turnover led to a 9-0 Spurs run down the stretch. Thankfully, if you're a Warrior fan that is, following a Steph miss, a beastly Draymond O board would lead to Klay Thompson coming through in the clutch with this dagger. Draymond's historic night, where he was 3 percentage points shy in the true shooting department from posting the first ever 100% TS 25-10-5 game, was capped off in fittingly dominant fashion, as Green would secure position down low on Wemby to draw this loose ball foul before splitting a pair at the charity stripe, a free throw that secured the win. Give credit to Coach Steve Kerr for helping swing momentum in the Spurs matchup by rightfully tearing apart unofficial for a blasphemous no-call on Pajemski, who was hacked on a fast-break drive without a whistle being called. Kerr holding the refs accountable would get the dubs fired up after a rough start. From green suspension to the utterly devastating passing of beloved assistant coach Dayan Milojevic, aka Deki, to key bench pieces in Paul and Peyton II, missing significant time due to injuries, to being under 500 on their home floor, to the ongoing head-scratching inconsistencies of Thompson and Wiggins. This season has been a roller coaster. In order to maintain their play-in position despite that, and potentially go further, the mindset the Dubs need to have for the final few outings, I'm going to talk about after this next talking point. That said, the Warriors have been utterly fantastic on the road this season, and they've gone 14-4 in their last 18 road games. In the second half against the Spurs, Golden State's extra passing I thought was extremely high IQ as they turned down good shots for great ones. I love the limited minute effort from Kevon Looney, aka Loon Dog, to make the extra effort to rotate out to shooters while doing the dirty work. I mentioned Paul, Green, and Curry being elite passers last video, but we didn't factor in mini Draymond being Brandon Pajemski. Pods is another viable facilitator at his best, and for this team's two top rookies in general being both Pods and 
and Trace, these two provide a silver lining amidst this Dubs roller coaster campaign, no matter what happens. Because Dunleavy could have very well drafted the next Green with Jackson Davis and the next Curry with Pajemski, strictly in terms of the team's future point guard and center. Let's get to the mindset this team must adapt for survival. With only eight games remaining, the Warriors must start treating every game like a play-in tournament matchup, given you'll likely be looking at winning not just one, but two outings to qualify for the actual postseason, a tall, wearing task. Let me know your score predictions for the Dubs' next matchup against the Mavs at Chase. Best answer gets next video shoutout and competes for free merch. Today's commenter shoutout goes to JJD for saying the Dubs' key is Kaminga stepping up even further than the number two option. Clay Thompson needs to have a good 20 to 22 a game as well for the Warriors to go on a long winning streak. Well put by JJD. Thank you for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing as I couldn't do this without your support. Your boy DFlow signing off, and I'll see you next video.